Hey. <laughs> we just got back home from doing all the shopping. Yeah? Well, I guess it wasn't all the shopping. It was just mostly errands. Yeah, I see but. Mona says hi. I know a bunch of you are in here. I'm looking on my computer. That is Max. And did you, does Max eat his cookie here? Yes, he has already eaten his cookie. Here. All right. So, I'm going to let Cheryl say hi to you. And maybe, why don't you tell us, um, tell us where you are, how's the weather. It's kind of dark out here, so, because it's all of 530 and it's cold and rainy mm -hmm. and thanksgiving is in two days okay so she said he has a licky licky okay <laughs> we are speaking in animal code now <laughs> about our young one. Oh, kalina's here yay and davinka uh wishes all of us a day of gratitude love and peace i love that Delia is here, and Mona. Ooh, Betsy says, Pennsylvania is cold and rainy, and it's sleeted this morning. Ew. It kind of felt like it was maybe going to. I don't know what I've done with my I'm obsessed, evidently, with my hair, because I keep going, oh, it's so weird, and, like, finding these little places. Yeah. I think I'm a little overstimulated. How about you guys? How about you, Cheryl? Did today overstimulate you? We went to Sam's Club and we went to like Home Goods. Hmm. I think you must be overstimulated. Where else did we go? I think you have food on your face. I told you. <laughs> I told you I thought I had food on my shirt. Dude. No, I'm not concerned about your shirt. <laughs> You're right there. It's pretty funny. <laughs> take that for a Cheryl says I'm a little discombobulated too <laughs> I just I can't remember everywhere we went like oh we went to the dentist this morning that was our main goal was going out to the dentist the dirt he's like sparkly <laughs> we didn't have any cavities so yay oh. um, and I'm just gonna go through it I'm, and we probably are gonna be slightly silly today so hopefully <laughs> that's okay with everyone which means we're in much better moods than we've been in yeah, that's while, true. So. I was a little worried because we're actually going live in Elizabeth's Chapel Hill plant-based pod, which we did a couple of Tuesdays ago when we started. We were like, rawr, 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 <laughs> And but by the end, after we had talked things through, we, we felt normal again. Yeah. And it's hot. It's gotten hot. It was really yeah. cold all day long, and now I'm starting to get red. Cause it, I'm yeah, because you've got, now you've got too, too many clothes on. Y'all, it was the we I see the weather is having issues with you with you guys. I see that in Pennsylvania it's sleeting. Maryland and Louisiana is probably experiencing something similar without rain. Uh, it says it's 58 here, but it was colder than that earlier. Hey Cheryl from chilly Bedford, Ohio. 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 Yeah. Um, Oh, and Lisa's in Edmonton. That's a beautiful, like, profile picture. Mm. A bit chilly and overcast. In Rochester, it's cold and rainy. And Apple in Vancouver is cold, rainy, dark. A lovely Pacific Northwest day. I nice. love that. Oh, yay! And I only see Facebook user, but I will try and go and see where you are. We are happy to see you, and I would use your name should I know it. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, There's, Facebook isn't playing nice with giving names. You these have days. to kind of click through a certain way, but then if Facebook messes it up, then maybe it showed you before and it doesn't now, and it's not your fault. Oh no, Marilyn said we had a tornado watch last night. Wow. And today. Yeah, Home Goods is the best. Mm. So I left this out. We got Cheryl an early Christmas present. Can you see that? It's Stitch. It's Christmas Stitch <laughs> loaf pan. So we were thinking we might um, make a holiday. She's wanting me to make a holiday loaf, and I, we're gonna we are gonna talk Thanksgiving. I thought we like to set up some expectations and parameters. I thought, which means there aren't many really. We can talk about Thanksgiving feelings. If we're nervous about eating out and about the way we eat, 
or what we're cooking. That's why I have my laptop over here because we talk about some things and I can pop some recipe links in. I'm happy to do that for sure. If you're on my mailing list, today you got the second Thanksgiving email. I'm gonna send one tomorrow too. And then we're gonna go live tomorrow night. And we're gonna go live mm -hmm. sometime Thursday. I keep telling you I'm gonna tell you ahead of time. And I'm trying to figure that out. Um, oh, Marlene is in Tallahassee, Florida, humid and rainy. We're happy to see you here. I'm glad there's no tornadoes. Hey, Lisa in St. Pete. Oh, Kathy Mack is here. Ooh, the, which veggie chopper are you guys using? I like the OXO veggie chopper, and I found it at Ross's. Mm. And um, in case you weren't in any of my <laughs> recent classes lately, well, it's, did I not put it back where it goes? Probably not. I bet I didn't. It's right here. Okay. I had a, <laughs> this weekend <laughs> I taught so everything's six a hot of mess. Classes, six hours of classes. So the dehydrator class was like mm -hmm. three and a half, longer than three and a half hours. Then on Sunday I taught fabulous 40s Thanksgiving dinner. But this is the one I like. Here's the thing I would not expect to love about it. It has a hole in the back. And if you, and if you make it too full, it will just kind of start falling out. But here's the thing. You can go chop, 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 chop. Shake, 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 shake in the bowl. Yeah, but show them the other part too for cleaning. And so everything gets stuck up in here and the OXA one has this. So this goes in before you start chopping and when you do this, all the crud comes out. It's lovely. It's really nice. It only has one size dice in there. And online it's like 20 some dollars, but it's $16 at Ross's. I saw another one last night. Um, Makes her happy. You know, well, and I got another chopper originally for Cheryl to start chopping up some stuff. The death chopper you gave me. What do you mean the death chopper? Because that's the one you're always like, don't touch the blades, the blades are really hot. That's because you cut yourself really easily. So <laughs> I do warn her about things like that. And I have like, I'm the one who cut myself with a knife. I literally just was holding the knife and got too close and it just kissed it. And I looked and there was no blood. I'm like, ooh, maybe I made it out. Nope, nope, and now I have a thing that I keep ripping up. Mm -hmm. um, Irma from Bakersfield. I went to tour the Tasteful Selections. The little bitty potato people, they were out of Bakersfield. Oh, and happy Thanksgiving to you, Cheryl. Serenity Blooms, you've just been so awesome and being here and like in it to win it. And we appreciate you very much. Um, the darkness is difficult. It is. And because like it's 543 because I'm on East Coast time. But I mean, it feels like nine o'clock. Yeah, it does. It feels later than it is for sure. Is, but. The, is the darkness bothering you at all? You know, the way the darkness bothers me is that it makes me feel like I don't have enough time in the day to get things done that I need to get done. Like, I feel like I wake up and I start working my day job, and by the time my day job is over, it's dark, and then I feel like I don't have the same amount of, of bandwidth to get things done because it's dark. For some reason, my brain says, oh, it's dark, you should be done working now, and you don't it's dark, you shouldn't be doing anything else. Even though everything I have to do can be done just as easily in a dark house as it can a light house. But I don't know, it's just, it's a brain thing. It's a mental thing that it, it when is. it's dark, it tells you it's time for you to wind down and. Well, and that's one, I, I kind of like that in the winter because I feel like I'm a little burnout. Actually, I don't even just feel like that. I think the statement is I'm a little burnt out. Mm. And this is, I'm not feeling bad about it. I've been kind of taking care of myself and doing the things I need to do. We're going to be, um, but what I like and what I always hope for is that in the winter we get this nice, dark, cozy, like you wear, 
you know, you guys are probably like, seriously, I'm in my sweats now, <laughs> but I'm going to be cozier than this in like my giant fuzzy Udi with like characters on it sitting in front of the fire. Um, oh, I want to bust out my new, my new little loungy pants. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you, what were on those loungy pants? Bigfoot. Yeah, she got Bigfoot loungy pajama pants. We truly are 10 years old <laughs> in 58-year-old bodies. Um, but my brain hopes for it so that I can just turn off and kind of go and relax. And I feel like we ha haven't done a good job of that the past couple mm -hmm. of years. No. And, and I think one of the things, and this kind of fits in with what we're doing, too, is... Um, and hey, Jackie, we're glad you're live with us, too. And Tracy Reese is here. I'm just kind of pinning some things up so you guys, um, but I see all of you, and I'm very happy. Um, that a couple of years ago, during this kind of dark time frame, we started going to bed at 8 o'clock. Yeah. And it was glorious. And why was it glorious? It meant that we had stopped doing whatever we needed to do, kind of rested, watched some TV, or taken a, we have a dog that I'm not going to say the word, w. Um, or, you know, had dinner, and then I could just curl into bed, get super cozy, and we could just read. And reading is something that really helps calm my brain down. Yeah. Like it calms you down, for sure. Not fiction. so much me. Fiction. And I want to be real clear. And mm. the, the more frivolous the fiction, as I've gotten older, the better for my brain. So, like... Vampire, werewolf. Witch, cozy, cozy mysteries. mysteries. Like, like, yeah. No, I'm taking it to the nth degree. Like, next... Like, like, Next step will be that are dressed up like fuzzy, fuzzy stuffed animals. <laughs> like acorn, or <laughs> like acorn or BBC TV cozy oh, mysteries, oh. but with supernatural characters. <laughs> yes, yes, and I agree with that. Laura says that we have so much fun with our stuff. I yeah, the pan is adorable. It really is. And Cheryl, we get where we get attached to certain characters and things, mm. and we just let ourselves have that little pleasure. Mm. Because I think, you know, if it's that we like purple, so we have more purple. I got a, you know, I would get a purple spatula. Your purple's purple. bleeding over onto me this year, I know, year too. you're getting into the purple. And this is an older shirt that I actually got at Triangle Veg Fest in 2019. Yeah, 2018. And it says, tis the season to be vegan. It's so cute. And, it, and see, even little things like that, it's just a way... Sometimes when I get up, I'll, I know you guys are thinking this is crazy, but I will pick out my t-shirt statement depending on my mood. She will. And I'll be like, is this a moons out, brooms out day? Or is, you know, this like... My, my life is easy. Am I going to wear the dark black t-shirt or the dark navy t-shirt? Am I going to wear the light gray sweatpants or the dark gray sweatpants? Right. And, not all of us have that luxury. Some some of you have to go in the office. I've had to go in the office before, and there's nothing that I will try and tame more than a dress code. Oh, yeah. Like, if you don't give me a dress code and I have to go into work, I will actually dress better. Like and if you give yeah. me a dress code, I'm that person. As soon as you give her a dress code, she's like, oh, I'm not. They can't tell me what to wear. Well, then I'll go, well, how can I do? <laughs> Okay, so... Let me push it to the very edge of that. Exactly. Um, let's see, Ellen says it's 43 and raining in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Is Pottstown. That, is that where that movie, Pottstown, with the... No, that's Potterville. Uh, Potterville, it is. That okay. movie's awesome, y'all gotta and watch it. it's a good it. winter movie. It's kind of funny. And it's, it's Christmassy. It's, it's a little quirky. It's, it's definitely quirky. Yeah. Um, but basically, someone's dressing up like Bigfoot. It's hilarious. But it's a very weird, odd character. It's super funny. Yeah. I, I, if you liked Napoleon Dynamite, you might like this movie. So it's quirky. Um, I don't even think it, you need to be that quirky for it. I think it's just, 
I think it, it pokes the, fun at lots of things. Yeah, but I really enjoy. Yeah, it really. Actually, now I want to watch it again because yeah. then there's the the Bigfoot Hunter that comes, and yeah. he's hilarious. And there's a TV show and everything. Like, yeah, it's, it's like like it's he's just, filming a reality TV show, like any of those reality shows that you would see. And it, it just chaos ensues, and it's really funny. And then the other thing. And, and I'm going to, I'll mention this one with a caveat. If you are not okay with cursing and bad language, do not watch this. Okay? Promise me if you're not okay with it. However, it doesn't bother me at all. Which one are you talking about? Christmas with the Campbells. Oh, yeah. Oh, I my started God. watching that last year. <laughs> I think it's on Hulu, but there is lots of cursing and mm. some inappropriate things. So I want to be real clear about that. But it's made to look like a Hallmark Christmas movie. Yeah, I if, watch all the Hallmark if, Christmas if movies. If you would like to see an immaculately done spoof poke fun at a Hallmark movie, this is the movie for you. And it, it it's really funny. Yeah. And so, but there is a hint at drug sort of drug use not really but there's a lot of cursing and foul mm -hmm. language yeah and most of it coming from like the grandparents age honestly except yeah. for in the very beginning with the the boyfriend girlfriend thing yeah that but serious so like so i'm just don't watching, give too much okay away. okay but i'm just watching it and then all of a sudden like they drop like a big curse bomb and i'm like did I hear that wrong? And I like, rewound. But that's because you thought you were watching a Hallmark movie. I did. I honestly thought I was watching a Hallmark movie. So anyhow, that was super fun. Um, she was watching it by herself and screamed, Shut up! Come here! She made me come upstairs from whatever I was doing. She was like rolling it back. She goes, did they just say what I thought they said? Like, what did they say? What and I was say? like, well, this can't be a real Hallmark movie if they're saying stuff like but that. We, I don't remember where I found it the other day. I was like, okay, it was just down the list. Okay, we'll watch this one. I was like, oh. But it was kind of funny. It's super fun. So if you like things a little bit wacky. Yeah. Um, so what is on the sweets menu for Thanksgiving? I think Dawn is going. So we're having Thanksgiving with our friends, the Maishas, mm -hmm. Dawn, Rob, and Finley. And we kind of already had a little meeting at a coffee shop, and we divvied up things that we're going to make. And I might have to get out my list if you ask me a lot of complicated questions. I try to leave everything open because my favorite part about cooking for holidays and big meals is that I go, I have all the things. What shall I make? Mm -hmm. Right? So, but I have to stay at least on my interstate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't, so she's doing the green bean casserole, mm -hmm. so I won't be doing green bean casserole, but I'm probably going to do Brussels sprouts, so stuff like that, and none of that had to do with desserts, so no. Dawn, Dawn is going to make Susan Boysen's of Fat-Free Vegans Impossible Pumpkin Pie, so basically it's like the old-timey pie that makes its own crust. Why are you making that face? No, I was just making the that sounds yummy face. Okay. Maybe I need better. It looks like you're going. Mm. No, no. Okay. I was like. Mm. Um. I did. I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do. So if you were in my October Thanksgiving class or in the fabulous after 40s class on Sunday, and and I'll tell you how to do it anyhow. I just don't have the post up. So I got a really big, at least that bigish sweet potato. It was a nice, big, chunky one. Mm -hmm. I baked it till it was done. Let it cool. And then I put it on a plate, and I cut it. And then I literally took my hands and smushed it. Do we it. not have any more? I, I just cut it up and squished it into oh. a thing, so you can't really see. So then I leave the skin on. So the skin is on the bottom, and I push it down. And then I saw... You could do a lot of different things for the toppings, but basically that's our crust. That's our whole food plant-based no oil crust. You could be like sly and sprinkle some pumpkin pie spice on there. You could do all kinds of things with that. Then I cut up about four apples. I sliced them, sauteed them until they started getting translucent. I used a lot of medjool dates for this. So I think I used 10 medjool dates that this time around turned into like 
Bore my jewel with some deglets that I soaked in hot water. But if you have some date paste, you could just maybe half a cup ish, half a cup to cup. And I put in some cardamom, allspice, and cinnamon in there, and a little bit of vanilla. And I used some of the date soaking water and pureed that up in a small blender. I used the beast for it but like a little ninja would work if you have the cup that goes on to the Vitamix you can use that you're probably going to have to use more water than to get it to blend um, the Vitamix cup let me I can't reach all the way over there <laughs> I'm 5'1 and my counter is three feet wide so <laughs> This is, um, and I know some of you guys have it, and it's not bad. So see, it has this bottom part that basically it makes it fit on your fancy Vitamix base. Ooh, this needs to be cleaned. So you put your stuff in here, and then you turn it upside down, and you screw it on really good. And you blend it. I'll throw it over there. I'll take care but of it. But just because of the, the way it's shaped and stuff, it, I don't find it works on all things. The thicker things, it gets, gets kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. So then you would just put that in with the apples. Then we've got our little imaginary sweet potato base there that we'd put it on top. And you could, um, mm -hmm. you could do, even throwing in with the apples, you could do like some chopped up cranberries. Ooh, about some oats, like toasted oats or something. Yeah, you could give totally, it a little texture. You could totally toast some oats and put it on the top. That would kind of make it feel like a more of a crumble, crumble yeah. Kind of, yeah, like or like a French apple pie. Mm -hmm. So that's I'm gonna do some variation of that. Another person we were talking on Sunday said it's hard for them to have dates in their house. They have dates in their house, they eat them. So you could use ripe pears instead or canned pears in juice. Mm -hmm. I would save the juice and get the pears out and just put those in instead of the dates as my sweetening agent, just to make it feel a little special. So, oh, Delia, I bought a tofurkey. Do you have cooking advice to make it special? This is why I have this <laughs> open. I actually have a page on healthy, slow cooking just on well, actually, I have two. I'll give you two. Um, this is my recipe for tofurkey I'm putting in right now. And basically, this is what I'm probably going to make Cheryl tonight. <laughs> um, and I, if you go to that post, there's some other recipe links for Thanksgiving. But I use like water, maple syrup, nutritional yeast, here I used uh, Better Than Bullion, and I don't have a link. Use my homemade vegetable bullion instead, if you can, just because it's cheap. If it's too much to do this week, take a deep breath, let it go, use what you have. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so cheap and easy to make my bullion, which is just onion, carrots, celery, thyme, and nutritional yeast. Mm -hmm. Make a double or triple batch, freeze it, you're good for, you're good for the rest of the year. And then we've just got um, some different spices in there. Basically, kind of like poultry seasonings. Could you do this in an instant pot so that it doesn't take seven to nine hours? Yes, you could. And so it just depends. And I'll give you these, these other, some of the other tofurkey links are from friends of mine. Um, I would very, very much like to try this. Yeah, you've had it before. I know, but I'd, let, I'd very, very much like to try it today. <laughs> I would like to have Thanksgiving for the next three days. Yes, you would, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so the trick with tofurkey, and so for those, someone's going to be asking somewhere at some point, is tofurkey on the starch solution? No, it nope. has some oil in it. Once again, we do 90 to 95%, so we can do things like this on the holidays. It's not, we're not gonna have tofurkeys all year long. Plus, mm -hmm. tofurkey is fun once a year. It's not really fun to have once a month, usually. Yeah. Whatever doesn't get munched on in the next, what is it, two days before Thanksgiving? Uh, whatever doesn't get munched on 
by the end of Thanksgiving, then it will go in the freezer and will be my Christmas treat. Yeah, we, we were talking about putting some in the freezer. Anyhow, we might go ahead and put some mashed potatoes, do a whole thing, make our own little TV dinners. Mm -hmm. um, ooh, and Marilyn said she roasted su sweet potatoes for sweet potato casserole. Oh, I love sweet and potato I, casserole. Yeah, I have a really good recipe, and I'll tell, let me find it, and then I will tell you how you can make it um, compliant. Because I believe, go on in there, give me the recipe. It has nuts, but I f am almost positive it has butter in there too. And I'll t it, there's a workaround. I did it last year. Yeah. So I'm doing, the, I do this in the slow cooker. You don't have to. You can cook your potatoes and then you could just put this whole thing in the oven. You could do the Instant Pot too if you wanted. I like to do a lot of things in slow cookers. We're going to our friends. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I haven't had time to clean off the table. And so that's what we're gonna do Thursday morning and Thursday night, is work on decluttering. We haven't been able to clean or declutter in a while. But if the more things we have, like in Instant Pots and slow cookers, the easier it is just to like pack the car with them, go on, plug them in. We are literally going like a mile down the road. Not even a mile. Yeah, it's like almost a mile. <laughs> so basically you cook the sweet potatoes, then you mash them with some non-dairy milk, cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice cloves. You could stop there. You could also then put in, mix in some chopped, cooked or not, like minced apples, pears, fresh cranberries. That would also be another great way to make something fun sweet potato. So this is like old Southern style. So where you have, it's not the marshmallow one, but it's the one that basically has almost like a caramely nut topping. Mm -hmm. So this is the original recipe and I'll give you a way to make it compliant. So mm -hmm. it uses two tablespoons of vegan marjoram, and some olive oil, it uses way too much. This is one of, this is a recipe from 2009. So it's a very old recipe. Then I use um, brown sugar, I use some whole wheat flour, some non-dairy milk, and chopped pecans. So let's talk about how we can re-look at this topping. I would not put, obviously, any oil or margarine, or margarine in there, you don't need it. If you didn't want to use brown sugar, and with the whole wheat flour, it's just a little thickener. So I think what I would do now is much like that apple sweet potato pie, right? <laughs> I would make a date caramel. So I would take some medjool dates or deglet dates, soak the deglet dates, um, put enough water to blend it's easier if you put a little hot water on them and let them soak for a couple of hours. Some of the deglets I get are super hard. I would put um, a little bit of vanilla in there. And if you wanted to, you could put just a dash of molasses. And by a dash, what am I saying? Half teaspoon to a teaspoon to taste of molasses. Cheryl's like, what does that mean? Yeah, just a little bit. Because brown sugar, what makes brown sugar taste so yummy is molasses. So I would do I add think that it's my in. Thumb. Yeah, they they have measuring spoons. Measure. I feel good that they know that. But you didn't give them an actual measurement. You just said I said a half teaspoon to a teaspoon. When and that's a great point. Whenever I'm saying to taste, what that means is you're going to start with the lowest measurement that I said unless you're scared of that ingredient. So let's say you, like, if it was spicy, mm -hmm. and you're like, Kathy's food is spicier than I like, which is never the truth, but let's just pretend that it is, then I would start at the lowest number of a range or half that lowest number. So if you weren't sure if you liked molasses and you've never really had them, you could start with a quarter teaspoon. Blend it all in, taste it. Doesn't taste any different to me. Mm -hmm. Put that other quarter teaspoon in. 
Can I have oh, some, uh huh. Can I have some of your water? Oh, yeah. Share. I'll share. I'll put it in the middle. I got the Christmas tree one, so it would seem holiday or tree one. I don't. It's not necessarily Christmas, but you you bought that and well, I guess yeah, it's got little ornaments little, on little it. Little ornaments on there. So and then I'm using chopped pecans, and um, I just love pecans. So if we were either nut free or just really sticking to the starch solution and not using any nuts, and we we won't need any oil now that we're using dates. So you want to use brown sugar, but you don't want to use the oil. I would put in just a little bit of non-dairy milk, and I would actually heat it up and whisk it until it dissolves and move on from there. Um, with the pecans, if you didn't want to do any nuts, it's really just on the top. Anyhow, a great nut substitute in everything. I know you guys have heard me say this a bazillion times is take the rolled oats, put it in a pan, smell them, toast over like a medium to low heat, Just keep smelling them, and you're gonna be like, that lady has me smelling this for no good reason, and then it starts smelling like nuts. It really does. It's I've, crazy. It, it's, it's amazing, actually. Like, now sometimes I'll be like, can't you just toast those oats for that? Because it tastes so nutty to me. Right, and so you, what I would do is not cook it with them on there. I would just have some to the side and I would sprinkle it on right before serving so it'd still keep a little bit of crunch. Um, ah, and yeah, that's right. Marilyn uses a Mueller Austria chopper and she really likes it. It only has a quarter and half inch dices. Her daughter's Ooh, bringing her one. It has 12 different ones. I saw something like that today at, mm -hmm. when we were out shopping. Oh, Raw Chef Yen is here. Yay. Good morning. Um, but that's sweet potato casserole. I, so I'm going to make sweet potato casserole. What else am I going to... Um, I'm debating about one thing so I'm, I'm thinking of making my brussels sprouts and what i usually do this is and cheryl used to hate them is i usually do this by hand as i slice them and i think i'm going to try using the breville food processor i have to slice them i saute some onion well I actually saute some garlic she you could use onion she would rather me not saute some garlic Add in the Brussels sprout. Sometimes I'll put in some red, thinly sliced cabbage as well to give it a little brightness. I put a little bit of maple syrup. You could use date syrup or pureed date um, to give it a little bit of sweetness. I use some liquid smoke. If you don't have liquid smoke, you could use smoked paprika. And then um, in the past, I've done some chopped nuts in there. And so it tastes a little bacony from that, kind of like the sweet, bacony sort of flavor. You could even throw a little splash of apple cider vinegar in there or some shredded carrots for even more color. I'm trying to remember what else, and I'm trying to decide what I'm gonna do for a main, and we've been talking about it a little bit. So I'll see what else is, what other. I thought you were gonna do like a loaf. Didn't you say you were gonna do a loaf? Did, I think like I a, said it weaselly though, didn't I? I? I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. I'm not going to bring were. the big cauliflower just because I, I've made like three Thanksgiving dinners for all the classes, and the the family we're going to has already had half of a giant cauliflower. Yeah. So, but I made a couple of new loaves, and one thing that I did get too, we went there in Greensboro. There's Deep Roots Market if you're nearby. And um, they have gluten-free, vegan puff pastry, mm -hmm. not oil-free. Mm -hmm. So it's not compliant. So I'm thinking of, having, since she's having her tofurkey treat, and Dawn can't have gluten, and they would never do something in crude. So I was thinking of maybe making a loaf kind of can-sized, or rolling it after <laughs> it's done, and then rolling it up in puff pastry, and then maybe cutting out some leaves and putting it on there and looking all super fancy. 
Oh, you did those leaves on something once before, and it was really cute. They're really cute, yeah. And since I'm getting the puff pastry, it won't be that bad. There oh, is naturally me... vegan puff pastry out there and crescent rolls that obviously aren't whole food plant-based and certainly aren't no oil, just in case the vegan contingent knows. You made like a pot pie type thing. Yeah, and I, I haven't totally decided I might make a pot pie too, because... Mm -hmm is I could use the puff pastry. Um, another thing you could do, and I, I don't know for a fact, but I know that, I think it's phyllo dough, is, is how you say it, I'm not sure, apologies if not, has very little oil, if any. Usually the oil comes when you go out because they put oil in between each sheet as they build up things, like for baklava. Mm -hmm. But I've made this before where you take a sheet and you just kind of move them around and you can crumble them around the edges and make a really nice pie. And that gives you a lot of crustiness with mm -hmm. not all the oil that a pie crust is going to bring. Cool. So, and Linda says she's <coughs> taking roast garlic mashed potatoes, vegan mushroom gravy, plant-based cream cheese ball. Ooh. Tell us more about the plant-based cream cheese ball. Yeah, I want to hear more about that. I would like an excuse to go get some Mary's Gone Crackers. Oh, and Serenity it Blooms is in Hawaii. And our friend Doc Rock is in Hawaii mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, Marilyn bought organic strawberries from Costco. Um, oh, it's going to use her slicer chopper thing to slice berries and dehydrate to powder for a red powder. I make it with beets. Ooh. That would be good. Sometimes I've just quartered them before, but I'm, I'm much lazier than Marilyn is. We made like red apple peel powder. We made apple chunks. We made so many things in the dehydrate class. Oh, and Devin Davika says, I have LED lights everywhere in my house to combat darkness. And a lot of people get those um, sun lamps. And I did that when I worked in an office. Mm -hmm. They kind of give you, his, and since I don't work in an office, I don't have as much seasonal affective disorder typically. We still have those. Yeah. <laughs> Ellen says, I just knew that you had an Udi. <laughs> oh yeah, we got Udis. Wait till y'all see, like maybe when well, it gets we'll really cold, <laughs> when it gets really cold, maybe I'll even show you my footy pajamas. Well, and we also- we They have gonna, dinosaurs on. <laughs> we have so many silly clothes. I will say that. Um, but yes, we both have Udis and different, and it, it, they're huge. There's one size. They're, they're like, they're they're like, like the equivalent of a 5X five or something or like six that. Five or 6X. Yeah. So, and the, so they're not flattering. No. So I'm sure I'm going to put it on and someone's going to be like, I thought you lost some weight, but I don't think so. Yeah, but they're huge. They're, they're, they're huge so even, even when we were bigger. Even when we were bigger, they were huge. So. Huge, huge, yeah. Um, let's see, Kelly is in Ontario. Circadia rhythms, yep, at dark, sleep and wind down is what the body mm -hmm. wants, absolutely. I'm going to move this a little bit because it's, oh. it's, it's disturbing the, um, the, the camera. words. No, the <laughs> oh. words that I'm putting up there. Um, oh, Udi Hooded PJs. I don't think we've seen those. Do they um, have Udi bottoms? I think, yeah, I think it's the, uh, like a onesie. And Laura says, going back to the stuff, I call this bumble, bumble, bubble gum novels. No nutrition, but fun to chew. Yes. Absolutely. And Apple says, I'm a big fan of cozy fantasy fiction, too. There's just something, when, when the whole world is dinging your brain, like with, there's a fire here. There, the world is crumbling here. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. nice just to go, ah. This is nice. I like uh, Gail Carringer. Gail Carringer has some really good books. Um, it, she has kind of a Victorian steampunk series that's mm -hmm. really quite nice. And I just finished reading. She has kind of like um, a space opera sci-fi oh. series. I, I like the finished. original, like mm -hmm. the original ones that we, the Parasol Protectorate series. Um, she's just really good at like, like accents. 
with people and there's a Scottish werewolf and I can just, when I read it, I can just hear him and it's, it's kind of lovely. So I said that's ECU purple, go Pirates. Yeah, Pirate. it so kind of is. That's a, a college that's in the east part of the state. I need to get oh. I need to get an ECU hat to wear with my purple stuff. Hey, Rocky Blueberries, welcome! I'm glad. I think that's a, a just an adorable name. Yes. As well, <laughs> it just there's something else saying Rocky Blueberries. I know. Uh, okay, and Tracy uh, Reese says, only eating it really just me and the hubby this year, and he. He bought a vegan roast, which yeah. is amazing, yeah. and that's great to have someone kind of, uh, oh, Apple's Watch Potterville. It, okay. Yeah, it, it's good. I mean, <laughs> I think if you talk to me or get to see me here, you'll understand the level of quirk that I really <laughs> like about things, and I wish I could remember there was that movie with the, I mean, the you werewolf. Can, you don't, it doesn't like, take long to get to know our level of quirk, I mean. Normal adult human beings don't like that. Don't have kids. Don't like buy stuff like this for their. Stitch is very popular in the wear. kitchen. It's right? all over the home goods. All over the home goods. Did you show them my other one? No, it's got apples in it. I don't know where it is. Um, you mean your chipmunk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I got her chipmunk Christmas bowl. I'm getting her all the things that we have no place to put things. Um. And hey, Patsy and Nancy. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> she, we actually went to a character breakfast at Disney yep. just so we could see the chipmunks. And then I stood in line f and wasted a bunch of our Halloween, Halloween <laughs> party stuff waiting for, waiting for Stitch last year. So. But you know what? And again, kind of like with all these things, happening in the holidays and I feel like the holidays are both good and bad. It's good because you get to do something fun maybe, you get to spend some time mm -hmm. with family, but the holidays can add more stress and expectations mm -hmm. on already exhausted little minds mm -hmm. and like it can for me too. But like, so when we do go someplace, even if it's just going to Home Goods, we're still looking to get some of that like fun. Mm -hmm. Right, something. But this is great. Like, she's like, we don't need another mixing bowl. But what we did need was something to put apples on in. So <laughs> not the apple that's watching. The no. apples that we we use in yeah. baking. Because I mean, it's a good size. It it, it made her happy, and it's fine. This it's could be your pho bowl. <laughs> that's true. That would be a nice bowl of brothy noodle <laughs> soup. Um, Oh, good. Everybody's going to watch it. And so I just, and Ellen said, cursing and inappropriate things sounds like my kind of show. I just like to try and be very specific because yeah. I don't want anyone to start watching something that offends them. That is all. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's anywhere but Hulu. I don't know. I haven't looked at any of that stuff yet this year. Christmas on the Campbells was playing on something. If I didn't, I don't think it was Lifetime, but it was on something random. Yeah. That we had last year, and it just popped up on Hulu. Julia, Chef Julia's here, and is making Snickers date bars. Oh, I'm going to your house. Yum. And you know what? We met some. And uh, we met our neighbors, and the wife reminds us of. You. Yes. And she's actually from Texas as well, so it may be the accent, but she has a little bit of the twinkle in your eye, yeah. too. <sighs> a stuffed pepper recipe. I don't know on if you the blog. Heard. I don't on the blog. I do in a couple of books. I think I have one in the Outrageous book, and I think I have unstuffed peppers in the vegan uh, vegan slow cooking for two and I think I might have a stuffed pepper soup so serenity if you want to email me at kathyhester at gmail.com and go hey can you snag me a, a pepper recipe I'll send it to you I'll go find one and, and copy it doo, doo, doo. oh yay 
And I wish I knew who made it now. It's so long ago, I don't remember. I swear I had one, too, that had something different on it, and I don't know where it went. I don't know either. Mm. Um, let's see. Uh, Mona says, also, I buy dates only if it's for recipes and then get them out. Mm -hmm. And I often have little emergency dates. <laughs> She'll put two little dates in a bag. I put the little bitty ones, not like the big majul ones. Yeah, they're like tiny, they're like, like bite-sized little things. And she'll put those two little things in a baggie and, and stick them in the car in the, in the glove box. So in case we're out somewhere and she starts getting that I really got to eat now thing, um, that well, she can just pop a date. And, and let's be clear that I really have to eat now thing. It's her means, thyroid thing. It means I'm about to burst into tears and or pass out. So yeah. with my thyroid has gotten high a few times, and when it yeah. does, it's really bad. Like, it's been a little unpredictable yeah. at times. So, so I keep that, but like, so far I haven't abused that in any way. And I have mm -mm. just like I think we were talking the other day that over here I have all kinds of nuts, but they're in my milk maker like containers. So those are cooking nuts. I would never grab a handful of them. Mm -hmm. I would never let Cheryl grab a handful. Mm -mm. Of them. I wouldn't even dream of taking <laughs> anything out of there. Like, and the dates that are over there, because I usually get them like when I see them on sale, like at TJ Maxx or Home Goods. I think we have some now from Costco. And I don't think of those as anything other than cooking either. Right. And so so far we've been okay, but it's yeah. one of those things. If we started feeling weird about it, we get it. We out get of it the out of the house. In fact, I was, the other night, um, I was staying up really late, and so I was eating a lot of junk because I was trying to keep myself awake while I was editing some videos. And um, it, it, was, it was getting to the point that I was, like, scrounging around in places to try to find something that I could put in my mouth that had could boost me up, like some sugary stuff, and we just don't have that much around. But then I remembered that I had some candy from last Halloween. And I didn't know she hid it, so I didn't. Eat, we didn't clean it out when we cleaned out the and house. And so I pulled that out, and I had, like, they were just those little teeny tiny, like, bite-sized things. And I, they were, like, Milky Ways or something that I don't really like that much. And so I just, I tasted two of them, and then I was like, these are gross. And so I just threw the whole bag in the trash can. I mean, like, it was a full bag of candy. Like, I probably should have gave that to some kids on Bull City, but I was like, I just want it in the trash can, so. Well, and I was asleep, so I didn't know this happened until days later. Yeah. Um, I'm usually the one that says, let's give food away, because I just feel a little bit weird about it. But I was that. also, at the same time, very proud of myself yeah, for just going, absolutely. just let's just throw these out. Because no, I because... Because the thing is, is we both thought all that stuff was out of the house. Yeah. So I am. I keep finding things like it's so weird. It's like you hide I things. hide stuff. Like she would always be like, "Hide the Oreos from me," and and then I would hide the Oreos, and then sometimes I would forget that I hid the Oreos. So who knows where else we're gonna find, like you know, year old Oreos stuffed in. You know, Someplace. you find some stuff and we just deal with it. We'll you just know? throw it. Well, at that point, they're so old. Yeah. We're just going to throw yeah. it out anyhow. No, but I'm, I'm just saying, it's so weird, the places that I hide stuff. Well, and part of the reason, just so you guys know, so like, <clears throat> I wasn't eating gluten for several years. So mm -hmm. I can have a little bit. I've had a little bit too much. So <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> this week we've gone out a couple of times and so I've had too much gluten and this is starting to swell, but I wasn't having any gluten at all, except for the occasional vegan Oreo. This is obviously before the starch solution. Yeah. And so I wasn't really able to be really great about those, so Cheryl would hide them and just give me two. But mm -hmm. we're not doing that now at all. They're just, mm -hmm. that, that's another thing we're not having in yeah. the house. We, there's no way. Chips, like, cookies. Like we thought about at, at Halloween, we were like, oh, maybe we should get a little treat, like some Halloween cookie treat or something. And we were like, no, mm -hmm. it's not even, it's not even worth it. Yeah. No. And, and you just kind of have to see how things go. So Nancy's saying, 
I'm making stuffed shells with tofu ricotta. I keep trying to adjust this just the right amount, and there is no way to do it. With tofu ricotta and pumpkin, it has bechamel, but the sauce has a little vegan butter for roux. Is there a non-fat way to do bechamel? Mm. The, yes. And there, there's a non-fat way to do a roux, and this I can tell you how I make my gravy. So it's going to be closer to a gravy than a proper bechamel. But I use, um, and I think on healthy slow cooking, I'll, I'll look after I tell you this. You'll help me or remind me. For I think creamy gravy is on there, and or creamy sauce. And so I take oats, I toast them, just like you would toast flour for a roux. Then I will go ahead and put them in a blender of a kind and make them fairly small. It doesn't have to be as fine as regular flour. You could also just take oat flour if you have some and toast it or whatever kind of wheat flour, rice flour, whatever flour you're going to use. Toast it over like medium heat slowly because it'll go from toasty to burnt a little fast. And then I actually just put in non-dairy milk. And that's how I'll make a white gravy, like a southern white gravy. Um, I think for the mix, I've added in some garlic, onion powder, and some nutritional yeast to give it a little bit of flair. But um, yeah, you don't have to use oil in that. That's how I also make the roux for my gumbos. And Marilyn, who's on here, also will go ahead and just do toast a whole bunch of oats on cheap pans and make a jar of ready to go roux. It's a dry roux that then you can add other things. Typically you're like toasting that then adding butter and but you don't need to do that. Hey Angela, it's awesome to see you here. And I, it's so funny, I'm getting it's too late. So Davika, pineapple, are we talking about maybe for the top? like the sautéing to go on top of the sweet potatoes, because that could be pretty daggone good, mm. is what I'm thinking. Um, and when we're talking about ricotta, and I know I keep saying this, but I am going to be filming this, the Okara ricotta recipe, but there's a couple ways I do ricotta. The laziest way I do ricotta is, um, drain out some firm tofu, crumble it up, mix it with nutritional yeast, salt or salt substitute, onion powder, garlic powder. Did I say nutritional yeast? I think I did, but mm -hmm. in case I didn't, the nutritional yeast is pretty important. Put a little bit of lactic acid if you have some, or a little bit of apple cider vinegar by a little bit, like maybe a half teaspoon to a teaspoon. Again, start with a smaller amount. And that makes for a really good I gotta have it right now, ricotta. The okara is what's the pulp left over after I make soy milk. And it's a beautiful texture for ricotta. I mean, mm. it looks just like that kind of chunky ricotta. It reminds me a lot of when I do almond ricotta, like soaked almonds and it's the same sort of thing. And I put the same ingredients in that. And with the mouthfeel and everything, it really reminds me of the $10 for a little packet. Kite Hill ricotta. Oh, and, and it goes great in the lasagna that I make. Yeah, and also I was thinking what I might do too. Usually I don't dry, uh, strain that okara all the way because I'm, I want it to go ahead and be a little milky ricotta-ish. But I was thinking of making it a little bit drier and putting it in a mold and putting pepper jelly on top of it because oh. <laughs> I thought you would really like that. Yes. <laughs> Yes, that's and one so, of those things I really like at the holidays. So we'll see about that for sure. But those are some easy ways to make ricotta for sure. Ah, blah, blah. Everybody's saying hey, and that just warms my heart. Um, is it Sheila? Yeah, I think that's Sheila. I'm thinking about the stuffed shells also. The recipe looks yummy with a few emissions. Yeah, and you can do, if you... Okay, first off, I had said I was going to give you what recipe this, I was going to look for, let's see, let's do dry, the dry, why don't you talk while I'm looking? Well, I, I don't. You don't know what to say? I don't, like, you're the cook, so they're asking cookie questions. 
cookie questions? Cooking questions. Let's see. Here's... Christmas for Kathy needs to be hearing aids. <laughs> <laughs> I think it has to do with my brain being overwhelmed. Okay, this is the gravy recipe, the instant gravy recipe. Um... And then I have literally this white gravy recipe. The only reason it's here is because it's in a jar and all you have to do is take it out and use it. So like it's, it's almost nothing in there. And oh, I, lasagna. I have a great slow cooker pumpkin lasagna. And lasagna is the only thing that I can reliably cook myself because I, I cooked a great lasagna before I became vegan. And then when she made me that ricotta knockoff, I was able to make um, basically my same one, just vegan. Yeah, because at that point we had gotten some like Beyond Beef crumbles. And if you see a recipe for Beyond Beef crumbles, you can do a couple of things. You can mince up mushrooms mm -hmm. or a combination of mushrooms and cauliflower. Mm -hmm and just saute it and that would work really well too. So let me tell you about some substitutions on this pumpkin. So I do a pumpkin tofu ricotta and you can look in here. It uses a tablespoon of olive oil, which is completely unnecessary. Um, it uses some sun-dried tomatoes. Yeah, I don't have to use those either. It's what, it, sometimes a recipe is what I had then that sounded good all together. So I probably now would take this, I'd use the pound of tofu one and a half cups of pumpkin, nutritional yeast, Italian seasoning, onion powder, garlic, salt or salt substitute, and pepper. And I would put maybe a little bit of tomato powder in there if I wanted it to be there. Or you could, you know, chop up some um, non-oil, not stored in oil. But either if they're really dry, pulse them a couple of times in your blender. If they're soft, you can cut them with a knife. And then I put white beans in, in the lasagna layers. You could mm -hmm. do collards. You could do almost anything. Could you do kale? Yeah, absolutely. Anytime something calls for collards or spinach or something like that, you can almost always change it around. Mm -hmm. Ooh, chestnuts. And I, oh, we've got chestnuts somewhere. I just here. saw them. And I got them at Costco. I have, really? haven't used them yet. I'm bringing them. Oh. Why <laughs> do <laughs> <laughs> And these are roasted chestnuts, and they just have chestnut kernels. So they're for lazy people like me. And they're in these individual bags. So um, I know Chef AJ makes kind of um, a nut sauce with this. And so I was thinking we might do something fun with some of these. What are better about chestnuts than other nuts? Oh, they're really low fat. Yeah, it's 0.5 grams of fat. Wow, they are for like... This, for half of this packet. No? It says 1.75 ounces. This is 3.5. For Serving. half. So one of those? No, half of it. Half of that okay. is 100 calories and 0.5 grams I'd say about... Of fat. Seven roasted chestnuts. It's, so, that's a little confusing because it says 12 servings per package and then it, serving size is not correct. Those are pretty compliant there. Yeah, no, they're very compliant. So I like that. Mm. Um, also, there's like usually, I don't know if Starbucks is doing it this year, there's usually like kind of um, a chestnut latte. Mm. And I think I may have a chestnut. Do I have a chestnut latte on here? Or what do I? chestnuts taste like? Do you want to taste one? I don't know that I've ever had chestnuts, have I? Open it up. No, I may have taken pictures for it. I'll see if it's on plant-based and stuff pot. They smell funky. No, I don't have it, but like... They're sticky. Yeah. Why are they sticky? Because they're not supposed to be like other nuts. They're like roasted. They're waterier. They're kind of, that's kind of gross looking. Okay, you don't have to taste it. Well, no, I'll taste it, no, but no. I'm just saying Let's it roast looks them. gross. Let's roast them okay. and let you taste it But it that says way. they're roasted. Let's roast them dry. Okay. So, 
though, because, like, as far as I know, they're still good. Yeah, they're still good. It's okay. They're not just like, so you're expecting a chestnut to look like a walnut. So they do have some kind of natural oil in them or something. Yes. Okay. You know the little things I that expected we've them to in be the dry like a peanut. That, that I've made X's on and baked? Yeah. And we're, that's a chestnut. Oh, okay. Okay, okay so we're good now. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, vegan knowledge is in the house. I'm glad that you're here, and I hope you're doing really well. Mona says, I love the Greensboro Farmer's Market. Mona, where do you live? Do you live near me and I don't know that? Or is it another Greensboro? Yeah, because if you're near here, that's a game changer. Well, hope yeah, you know we that. need to hang out at some point. Um, we, yeah, the Greensboro, Farmer's Markets are great mm -hmm. around this time of year for different things like this. Greensboro is our go-to relaxation location. It's our let's get away from the house so we don't work. We can actually relax instead of think about all the things we should mm -hmm. be doing. And Sarah says she's making Drina Burton's no food loaf and it's gluten free, which is great. Yeah, oh, the Durham Co-op has plant-based puff pastry. It, this is the only one that has the gluten free plant-based one. And actually it's the only place in hours, like three hour drive that has it. And it's only an hour away. Oh, Elizabeth, you can use the Jill Dalton casserole as your filling, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, don't forget to go look at her channel to get some ideas too. I know, favorite workout coach. You guys all know that you should be um, following uh, Angela at Boomer and Beyond as well. Hey, Kelly. It's awesome to see you here. Diana's here from Phoenix, sunny and 76. Wow. Oh, wow, look at you have over 8,000 steps. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> You're a goddess. I don't, I don't even think we're near that today. Uh, right? No, we've just done errands because yeah. it was raining. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's going to be sad. It's a sad amount. However, after this and after dinner, we can always get on the treadmill or mm. the bike and do our thing. Yep. Nancy says that she's taking cranberry salsa, which sounds delicious, and baked chips, arugula salad with red pears and pecans with poppy seed dressings. Oh, that sounds stuffed good. Stuffed shells with pumpkin tofu. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Where, where do we show up? Yep. We're, yep. Send us the we're, address. We're ditching our friends and we're hanging out <laughs> with Nancy now. Um, Oh, that's great. Diana says, I'm, I'm loving choosing starches. I've lost 18 pounds since August. Congratulations. Yep. Starches are the trick. Yeah, and, and starches are what everybody wants for the holidays yeah. too, right? Mm -hmm. I think if we had nothing else but mashed potatoes and sweet potatoes, mm -hmm. I could do just mashed potatoes and gravy and sweet potatoes. Maybe something green, either some greens or a lovely salad or some green beans. Green beans. <laughs> I've never met a bean that I don't like. I don't think. It's very, very true. I, I don't think I, I mean, like. Let's see what else we got. <laughs> Vegan Knowledge says, I love that you said level of quirk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Anita. Hi, hey. Anita. How is your new um, apartment condo house going? I know you moved recently, and I've been seeing some of your cool pictures of the rocks that you've been painting, which is very nice. Oh, and Marilyn said, I grew up in Rocky Mount, not too far from us, and an mm -hmm. ECU alu alumni, 1984. That's awesome. Elizabeth says the bowl would be good for popcorn. Oh, that would be. And one of the things I was thinking of trying, I haven't done it yet. I don't know if any of you guys have done it. Cheryl used to love caramel corn. Um, and obviously when you're making caramel, you can make a, a, a plant-based version fairly easily, but they're usually involving something like lots of cashews or lots of this or that and the other. But I was thinking if I used um, a date caramel and then we put it in the oven, Maybe. That, maybe that might work. I don't know if anybody's tried that. My mom used to make some kind of a 
caramel that she used to put in the mic that she used to make in the microwave. Yeah, it was probably and, butter and brown sugar. And then she would take Maybe. popcorn on a tray, and yeah. then she would drizzle it on there, and then put it in the oven for a while and dry right. it out. So That's that would I'm probably to think work. Of a, yeah, except for you can't just melt the sugar by oh, itself. Yeah. That's why I'm saying, like, so date caramel. I might just have to see what we need to do to harden it up. Maybe the thing. Mm. But I'll see what I, I I've got some. Oh, the ball made you smile. That's awesome, Carol. Ooh, making the Thai grain bowl from Ooh, Forks Over Knives. that sounds good. I think what we're doing once we get off the live is I'm going to make a big old pot of mashed potatoes that we're going to mm -hmm. eat on for several days because we got three kinds of potatoes from Sam's Club. We got yeah. the big russets, the big goldens, and the little baby potatoes. Um, and so I was thinking of making that, and I have some leftover mushroom gravy, and we mm -hmm. have some leftover um, kind of like cauliflower turkey. Um, and a few other things in there, too. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes the chipmunk ball. The chipmunk ball is awesome. That was such a good find, and it was really inexpensive for yeah. what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, and it's a Christmas decoration. We don't, we don't do, a, obviously, we go all out on Halloween. We don't yeah. go as all out on Christmas, but it's nice to have a few things here or there. But if we were at Disney, and we were at that place at Disney Springs that has all the Disney cookware stuff, this bowl would probably been forty dollars, forty bucks at least. And I think it was like ten. Yeah. Yeah. But and I'll use it, and also because I'm going to be doing some more ebooks next year, it's going to magically find its way in there too. And vegan knowledge says Angela has a good cantaloupe holiday recipe. Ooh. And if you guys want to put the links to that recipe in, Vegan Knowledge or Angela, go right ahead. Um, and Elizabeth is here. Yay! And Elizabeth um, is who I always talk about is the part of the, not the part of, is <laughs> the <laughs> um, plant pod in Chapel Hill. Let me see if I can get that link up for you. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the plant pod for a minute? Oh, yeah. So the plant pod in, in Chapel Hill is actually kind of huge, I and, think. And they as do far virtual, as of still do a virtual meeting. Mm -hmm. so and so they'll have in-person events, but they also like try to stream it too for people who aren't in the area. So they do a lot of virtual stuff still. And we like to, they are, they are the people that we like to sit with when we go to the vegan <laughs> buffet. So, and we also recently went and saw Jill Dalton do a demo at the pod. And they have a big potluck when they have in-person events. So free lunch, and it was delicious. <laughs> I don't know who made that, like, chickpea... Sesame chickpeas. Check sesame chickpea, but it tasted just like like sesame tofu. tofu that you would get at a Chinese restaurant, like spot on, and it was amazing. And I, I really need to get that recipe because it was delicious. Yeah, no, and if you're able, if you have a plant pot around you, I know one of the reasons we're doing extra talks or meetings or lives this week is because the holidays can be hard. And it can feel a little isolating, especially when you eat differently mm -hmm. than other people, or maybe even most of the people in your family or friend group. And having a plant pod is really awesome. So it's a place where at least you have this one little place in the world in real life, or again, you guys can come mm -hmm. virtually no matter where you are, that you get to meet some other like-minded people. Now, mm -hmm. in, in real life, it's awesome because then there's a potluck mm -hmm. and then you get to eat all the yummy yeah. foods. Like, I felt kind of bad because I just brought my chicken stew <laughs> and there's a, a and it's a soy curl stew. Nobody panic. Um, and it's just like soy curls, potatoes, carrots. It's what I make when I don't feel like cooking. It's kind of the equivalent of the old pot roast. Kind of, yeah. yeah. And, it's even easier than I put some poultry seasoning in there, water, boiling cubes, I, and I use a little extra water. I even reconstitute the soy curls right there in the Instant Pot, or you can do it in the slow cooker, and cook it for like 10 minutes, and Bob's your uncle, right? Yeah. Yeah. Bob's your uncle, and you got some dinner. You could serve it in a bowl over rice 
over mashed potatoes is the way mm. I like to do it sometimes. Yep. <laughs> and me and Oz says, Cheryl, stop letting her have those emergency dates. <laughs> and so the, the, the back story behind this, when I was on Vegan Knowledge's show, um, I had said, oh, well, I ha had to have my emergency date. And everybody and was, was just kind of like. <laughs> Everybody like, just kind of, their faces got really, it was funny. They're like, poor Cheryl. <laughs> Kelly just goes out on date. I'm like, no, no. It's dates for my tummy. <laughs> <laughs> so It's really funny. Oh, hey, Robin. We're glad to see you here. <laughs> Apple. <laughs> I haven't had a date in 38 years, emergency or otherwise. <laughs> That's awesome. Um Oh, awesome. Susanna's here, and she was in the um, Fabulous Over 40. And um, she was, yeah, I am going to do the Ninja Creamy course on sale. So get on my mailing list, everybody, because, okay, I hate Black Friday. Like, it stresses me out. I hate Black Friday. We, Cheryl was supposed to be protecting me from Black Friday, yet... Today, she's like, I've been looking, and look at this, and look at that. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's stuff for the business. I know, but you, do you know how many years she's yelled at me for looking at, at, I know. at Black Friday stuff for the business? I know. See, now that she's in front of you guys, <laughs> now she's like, yeah. But anyhow, so Black Friday stresses me out, so I don't want to stress you out with Black Friday. So I will say this, and I, I know I have a bundle that's a, down there somewhere. If you're in Kathy's Cooking Club, don't buy this bundle because the, this is just my class bundle. It's all slow cooker and instant pot classes. It's five classes and one of them gets filmed next week so you can attend live and see what being in a live class is like. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert. It's a lot like this but more organized. <laughs> right? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, oh, what am I going to make? Um, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put Kathy's Cooking Club on sale. I'm going to put the Ninja Creamy Experience on sale. And I haven't decided yet. There may be something that will go on pre-sale. When it starts, it will probably be possibly tomorrow if I can get my life together a little bit. But it's going to go till the end of the year. We're not messing around with you have 24 hours to buy this. I know it's the... And I know I probably am going to have business um, mentors that I work with yell at me about that. But there's enough stress going on. So, in fact, some of this may even last to, like, the first week of January. Mm -hmm. So, some people get Christmas money or <laughs> holiday money. You're welcome to do that. So, I will be sending all of this out in my email list. And once I get some sales pages and codes set up, I will come back and put it on the YouTube videos as well so that you can get that. Um, if you want to give anything like that for a gift, we can work it out. It's not, it's not smooth. There's no one easy way. You either have to kind of sign up as another person or you and I can talk over email and then I can set it up. It's not seamless in Thrivecart to give gifts. But, um, and I'm toying with something for the Kathy's Cooking Club members, too. So, but I'll tell you more about that as we go on. I'm also, I'm thinking about some other things, and, and I would love to know from you guys, because we're trying to think about how we can best support those of you who are trying to do whole food, plant-based, no mm -hmm. oil, or the starch solution outside of, like, being a member of Kathy's Cooking Club. So right now that's all cooking. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like this. You still get to talk in the comments and we all are still a great community. But I'm wondering, like, is it that we all meet once a month? Is it that you need, you want to do meal prep once a month together? Is it that you want to talk, have like Zoom meetings once or twice a month? Like, what does that look like? It would be a product so that means there would be some cost but it would be a small cost mm -hmm. um, but if you guys have some ideas because you're you're the people we're trying to serve mm -hmm. so if you know what where some of the 
Some of your safety nets have a little space. We want to try and fill that in. So if you have some ideas, email me, kathyhester at gmail.com, or put it in the comments. I'd be happy to know that too. Um, vegan cheesecake sounds really good. Now I have to search for a recipe for that. Oh, there was a, where was the, there we go. Carlene was saying, um, Get to Darut has a recipe for cauliflower cheese ball that I think is fabulous. She uses agar agar to make it into a ball, but I make it without the agar agar. It's kind of like a soft cream cheese. And you know who that, we met them in Las yeah, Vegas. Yeah, her and her husband. Yeah, yeah, they're super nice. Yeah, they're really lovely, lovely people. Um, <laughs> Elizabeth says, Deanna used to hide cookies from our brother, and later we, f we randomly found some on top of the fridge. <laughs> Obs is here! Hey, Obs! You guys, make sure you go check out her channel. She does a minute-ish of inspiration every day, and she is delightful. Yes. So we love us some Aubrey. Um... And Serenity said, and yet when she wanted a pleasure trap food, Cheryl's mind zoned right in on a hidey hole. Yes, if it's mm -hmm. in your house, it's, it's in, in your, your mouth. mouth. Yep. Chef AJ is completely right. Yeah, and I, we heard last night the Esther uh, Loveridge and the Seas Candy story. Mm -hmm. Remember, because it was um, in her house for three years before yeah. she ate it. But eventually she, she ate, ate it. it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. As soon as I started even, like, stress, it, it was because I was stressing out over some stuff, and I, I was very tired, and I was trying to find things to keep myself awake, and, like, my mind automatically went to, where's the last place you put stuff? Where's the last place you put stuff? Didn't you see something? Where's the, where's the place that you haven't got to yet? You know, kind of, <laughs> like, like, oh, there's cabinets all over here that I hide things mm -hmm. in that she doesn't go into very often, and so, yeah, the, you just it's, never know what you're going to find in there. It's interesting. So, and and we always try to say, too, that we're sharing our journey with you, the mm -hmm. ups and the downs, the goods and the bads, right? We're, we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, even Chef AJ, who I think we all feel like is perfect, I think we put her on a perfect pedestal, which is both good and bad. I think she's an amazing human being. Mm -hmm. But when I said that to Chef AJ, I'd said to her, because Doug Law said there are only two perfect people I know in the world, and was saying, you know, Dr. Goldhammer and Chef AJ. Chef AJ is like, I don't know why people say that. I'm not perfect. I eat some salt in my salsa. I had salt in a broth, you know. So mm -hmm. I think we all look at ourselves through this kind of distorted, like, magnifying glass mm -hmm. of what our little things that you know mm -hmm. I go and I'm like whoo what's happening with my hair I walked into this they're like your hair looks amazing I was like <laughs> it was kind of like wind blown and all over the like, place it was, it was all over the place I'm like thank you I appreciate that so I think sometimes just like we have to learn in regular life to say thank you and move on we need to you know do that with ourselves when we start going me 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 yeah because nobody said anything about my hair that's because you wear a hat. <laughs> if you didn't wear a hat all the time. I have to take it off for the dentist. Do you? Yeah. I guess that would be annoying. You should like, I don't know. Ooh, oh, Davika was saying sweet potato casserole with pineapple inside. That could be really good. Mm. Yeah, you could do the sweet potatoes. And then, um, oh, I might do like take the pineapple tidbits, reduce some of that juice that's in there and let it, because it would kind of caramelize a little bit and then let it caramelize under the mm -hmm. broiler. That mm -hmm. would be delightful. Mm -hmm. Hey, one anti-venom. And we're just hanging out, yeah. chatting. So, um, oh good. <laughs> I'm glad that, it doesn't feel like I'm putting the links up fast, but I'm trying to. That's why I have the computer over here. Yes. Oh, Chef AJ is here! Hey! Yay! I didn't even know that when I was telling that story about you. <laughs> <laughs> but you're just the best. Yes. Anyhow. Ooh, and Marilyn is making hot fruit in a crock pot. One can each. Applesauce, peaches, pineapple, plus two bananas, Bing cherries, and coconut sugar. My grandson's favorite. 
And I bet if you were not doing any kind of sugar, I would just put in some pureed pear or just put in some pear chunks in there. And that would mm -hmm. probably do it right up there too. A faux peanut sauce, yes. Okay. Oh. See, that's it. I knew. And we haven't had these before, the ones that are already pre done. They were a little. I think we're beyond the generation, most of us, that moist bothers us, but um, <laughs> I if, don't get if, that. if you aren't, I'm sorry I said that <laughs> word, but they, Cheryl thought nuts and was expecting a dry packet, and she saw it was kind of wet, and she was like, mm. <laughs> and Chef AJ, do you have a link to your faux peanut sauce? Because let's, let's share it with the world. I'll see if I can find it, too. Maybe she doesn't want to share it with the world. Oh, Nancy, yes, you did. I am behind on my email. So um, that is my fault, but I remember, now that you said that, I remember that yeah. I have a series of different colors of markings and stars. <laughs> so I know if I've emailed someone, if it's important, or that I need to read it again. Um, and I, we would love to do something with you and hang out. Um, it will probably not be for the next week or two though yeah. just because I'm just trying to regulate <laughs> my brain and emotions yeah. down like th this weekend was really good I love teaching classes mm -hmm. so like I love it but if I don't schedule everything just right sometimes it's a little exhausting mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know I'm yeah. not smart about that wouldn't you agree yeah <laughs> I'm kidding. I wanted to wait to see if she realized that she might have been trapped or not. But it was fun. Um, T.S. has never had um, chestnuts. What do they taste like? They're not like water chestnuts. I love water chestnuts. It's, um, I mean, they're sweet. That's not a nut. <laughs> It's not a roasted nut, but it has a nutty flavor. Smoky, kind of mid-level, a little bit dark. It tastes like sweet carrots to me. I don't know. <laughs> Do you remember those carrots I used to get when I'd go to the Cracker Barrel with Jenny? <laughs> of flavor so I can see kind of a thin line down the side of our flavor profile it has the same level of sweetness that a carrot does but it has a little bit of a darker flavor kind of like it doesn't taste like a nut no well it could be like a cashew no it doesn't taste like a nut or no. okay it doesn't taste like a nut to you <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's it's it is a nut. It doesn't need to taste like a nut. It just is. And now you know why she has to make things certain ways. <laughs> I know. It's just, um, yeah, see, apple. I'm just going to, I'm jumping over Yeah, here. let apple decide what they Roasty taste like. and nutty. I think they almost do have a little bit of a fruity flavor. They definitely are sweeter than a, nut, a regular nuts are. It has a sweetness to it. But roasty, toasted. Oh, that's what I mean when it's a little bit dark and things But like I can that. see where they would be good in like a, those would probably make a nice topping for that sweet potato. Yeah, I could see us cutting them up. Mm -hmm. I would toast them and roast them a little bit more so they would get a little bit toothsome, mm -hmm. and that would be really nice. Mm -hmm. um, being acknowledged as I've not had them, I only know chestnuts roasting. I don't know that song. On an open fire. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, we didn't have we're breaking into the Christmas special no I'm just kidding um, and Linda says I bought the, that box of roasted chestnuts and I have no idea what to do with them I try to bite and I don't like them okay here's what I would tell you okay when you open them I just tell people they're carrots <laughs> hand me a bowl get a bowl no like a smaller bowl smallish bowl we're sitting in front of the cabinet doors. Smaller. <laughs> oh, 
You can't be too picky because I can only get out so much of it. Okay, give me this. Just give me all of them. <laughs> I'm going to pour these in here and we'll look at them from above. And we'll talk about why. And, and it could be that you don't like them, period. And that's, that's fair and valid. Look, <laughs> Chef AJ, they're sticky because you're picky. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yup. <laughs> but see, you can see, see how they are wet? And in one way, you look at that and you're like, ooh, they just like, look like maybe nuts after they've been roasted in oil. It's kind of what they look like from here because they're shiny. They're shiny with moisture and they don't have a crunch to them. But we could roast these a little bit. And Would they be crunchy then? Well, we can find out. Do you want me to... Well, don't do them right now. We're going to do them right now. Okay. The people have spoken. <laughs> she'll, she'll whip anything in that breville. I love my breville. She does. Let's try. Ten minutes may or may not be enough or too much time because I've never done this before. So, um, so I think... The easiest thing to do would be Chef AJ's peanut sauce. And I'm going to, let's see, does she have a link? I know it's in one of your books. Let me see if I can find it over here. Chef AJ's chestnut sauce. Yes. That's different than the yummy sauce. There. I'm trying to find the best place. I think this is maybe the best place. So she's got a YouTube video on it. Chef AJ's. Are we boring you, Cheryl, on your phone? Oh, uh, no, no. <laughs> um, it dinged. I want to make sure that it wasn't my mom or anything okay so I put that in the comments so you guys can I think that would be really good I was thinking of trying to use it in some creamier sauces because it will make things I saw chef AJ make the peanut sauce that looked nice and creamy and for class for next week which is another slow cooker instant pot combo class which means recipes for both cooking in both we're going to do Thai soy curls. Mm. And I was thinking of trying a variation of Chef AJ's chestnut peanut sauce for that and see how that works. But I, I still can't get over there. Sticky because you're picky. If she knows me. <laughs> and Tia said I would probably have the same reaction as Cheryl. <laughs> oh, Ellen, oh, this is a good point. Apple says the packaged ones are steam roasted. Okay. So that's not a dry roast. So that would be like we put them in the Instant Pot, right? Instant Pot's a wet way of cooking. Air Fryer's a dry uh, way of cooking. Yeah. yeah, everything has oil in it. Davika says, I'm finding so many products that Whole Food have oil in them. Mm -hmm. um, vegetable broth. And honestly, if you don't ever make any other recipe that I've done except the vegetable bouillon, I will be pleased because I feel like that is my gift <laughs> to the world. <laughs> it's cheap. You control the ingredients. You can make it as multifaceted as you want or keep it super, super simple. And I just freeze it in ice cube trays. And then when you pop them out and put them in a Ziploc, they look super fancy. Yeah, they do. <clears throat> and Dawn actually puts them in heart-shaped um, ice cube trays. I think I found my owl ice cube tray, and I put some in the owl ice cube. Nice. So you can even do them to delight yourself the yeah. same way that we shop. Yeah. Um, but there is a lot of oil. I have not gone to the pig sanctuary yet. Yeah, we She's need to make that happen. She's not contacted me. She probably has. Have, is she? Mm -hmm. No? Or if, or if you have contacted me and you didn't say, I'm X from the pig sanctuary, I was confused. We want to go to the pig yes, sanctuary. Yes, we do. Very, very much. Maybe um, I'll have better luck with the pigs than I did with the goats. Do you want to tell the people why you're saying that? <laughs> because our friends got goats to clean out their yard, and we went over there to go play with the goats. And when all was said and done, 
three out of the four of us had terrible cases of poison ivy, and somebody who was all up in the goats <laughs> didn't get anything. I always like my hands were she so was filthy. All in it. She was hugging the goats. She was all over the goats. I had my face goat. on the goats. She was rubbing all on the goats. Nothing. Yeah. I mean, only I don't know why. I think Me, was, Faith, and Jessica covered in poison ivy. It was my pure love oh. for the goats. Like. Know. I am that grown-up. I've been that grown-up person and child. That you, if there's a petting zoo, I'm sitting right down and going, come on up, whoever you are, come on in here, bring it in. And yes, I know I'm probably sitting in animal pee and all kinds of things, and yeah. I just do not care. I want she the doesn't. snuggles. She doesn't. At that point, all the germaphobe goes away. It is gone. It does not exist. There is no, do you have sanitizer on that? You just touched a goat. Do you need sanitizer? No, no. we have sanitizers before we touch the goat so we don't give the goats anything. Right, but she's just... There's that. Don't forget that if you're going to pet some animals. Yeah. Don't give them anything. Yeah. But no, I am, I am kind of like the sanitizer police. And even before the pandemic, when Cheryl and I would go to Disney, because we would go and she would get sick. And mm. even now, and, and here's my public service announcement for all of you who probably don't need it. Remember, when you sneeze or cough, not this. Okay, first, not. Eh. <laughs> don't. <laughs> Just see this in your in your head. Mm. <laughs> don't do it in your hand because you're going to touch somebody or something or someone else is going to touch. <coughs> Achoo. And I feel like <laughs> that's the gift I want to be. And like. then she, then it only gets rubbed on me because then she'll be like, <laughs> no, I do not do that. <laughs> I'm capable of doing it, but I don't do it. Um, I don't even remember why. Why was I? Oh, why was I giving we're, people? We were. I don't know. We were talking about the pigs, okay. and then it went Sorry. into. We've also been out, and everyone has the same cough. And yeah. it seems like since the pandemic, no one will cover their mouths when mm -hmm. they cough and sneeze. It's the weirdest thing. You and think I, they would do it more. And I have feelings. Can you tell? Mm -hmm. I have feelings about that. <laughs> Big feelings. Laura says, I love roasted chestnuts. Chestnut cream or spread. I could see that. It's delicious. Make your own with dates. Um, the purchase kind has sugar and sometimes other icky stuff. Yummy on apple. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, I'm feeling you. I'm feeling you, Laura. Uh, I, I can't. I, you know, don't get wrong. My, my terrible reaction to those. They they taste like something that would be really good cooked with it, though. Well, and Laura says right? chestnuts are a starch, not really a nut. So they're a carrot. I mean, they taste like a carrot. They don't taste like, they're a sweet root vegetable, which could be a rutabaga <coughs> or a parsnip. It doesn't have to be a carrot. Um, stuffing. We're going to make some stuffing. Mm -hmm. um, Dawn is going to make a gluten-free stuffing, which may be what I'm eating. I, um, I actually got some bread that I've been drying out for several weeks mm -hmm. to make a stuffing with. And don't forget things like if you're not eating any kind of flours, that you could probably do a rice stuffing. Because mm -hmm. we're not stuffing anything. We're making something yummy. You'd and actually take that, that, um, that, that cauliflower turkey that you made. Mm -hmm. You could probably stuff with that because it had the stuffing kind of spices it tasted like to me. Yeah. That's, but it'd be too mushy, maybe? It'd be too mushy. Yeah. But if you had some brown rice, what I would do is maybe saute some some car uh, carrots, onion, garlic, celery, get some poultry spice going, get all that color going there. And I would maybe um, shred the carrot, chop up some um, fresh cranberries that are frozen. The only reason I'm saying fresh versus like dried is dried usually has sugar in it. If you find some that doesn't, that's fine. Sometimes they have oil in them too. And I got a giant bag at Costco. So I'm going to be putting cranberries in everything. Um, and you can 
even go ahead and put like some, like Cheryl would be real happy to put some corn and peas in there and use some poultry seasoning, a little nutritional yeast, maybe, um, mm. maybe a little bit of balsamic in there and a couple of bouillon cubes. I think that'd be pretty tasty. Yeah, I don't know if that was your request, but that is how I'm answering the comments, mm. stuffing. <laughs> Um, oh, and um, Apple says I'm a big roasted chestnut fan. Jill Dalton does not live in Chapel Hill, but she lives in Apex, which is nearby. Mm -hmm. It's really by. Oh, hey, Robin. Enjo she's enjoying our encouragement and support um, on the Starch Solution Lifestyle. Yay! Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. You're so sweet. Elizabeth says our pod loves y'all. <laughs> thank we, you. We <laughs> helped you that recipe good. Um, and yeah, I was surprised everybody liked that too because literally I was like, okay, I'm kind of phoning it in. This is my phoning it in dinner. But yeah. some of your favorite dinners I call cheater dinners. Like I start, I get a can of beans. And then I make it, it miraculously into something else. I feel the need to check these. I may have gone too far, but we'll see. Maybe not. No, ooh, see, they smell way different now. Mm, yeah, you want a plate? No, I got stuff over here still. Let me get a um, fork. I hate this pot holder because pot holders, the best thing about them is they don't let you get burned. That one is thin. It's, and right where you hold it, it totally burns you. That's our IKEA fail. But it's cute. It is cute. And this is why I always keep buying kitchen stuff. That, that's a fashion over function thing right there. And these could be, they could <clears throat> be a tidge overcooked, but I don't think so. All right, we'll try one of the, <laughs> what if you want? Blow, blow. Mm -hmm. You feel better about that? Mm -hmm. And also in the roasting, it kind of caramelized some mm. of the sugars in it. Yeah, now it tastes a little more nutty to me. It's got more of that toasty, nutty. Yeah. Oh, I, I think that just the texture on them before they were well, roasted and everything. They just, are a little bit gross. It just reminded me so much of those carrots. And they do, they do have a slightly carroty taste, but yeah, so I wanted to do that for all of you that we could have ruined chestnuts for. Yeah. Hopefully, ooh, that one was like super crunchy. That was good. No, they're, they're really good roasted, y'all, or whatever you just did to them. What did you do to them? Basically, I air fried them. She air fried them. them. Oh, okay. Nancy said, I missed you guys this month at the pod. I'm so sorry. You had, I hope you're feeling better. Yeah. For sure. And the Santo Molina hosts a vegan regular potluck in Vancouver. Ooh, she's had some superb plant celeb guests. Wow, we need to go to that one. I know. Maybe we'll get an invite someday. I just I want to go hang out with Apple. I know. I want to go. I've never been to Vancouver either, so that would be super fun. I don't think I have either. Uh, da, da, da. Kitty Mama says, how do I get on your mailing list? It's super easy. If you, like down where it's, if you're on a computer, I think even if you're on your phone, there's like the little description. If you click more, there's a link you can click on there. Also, you can just go to healthyslowcooking.com and on that first page, as you're sliding down, a little thing will come into focus and you just put your name and your email address. You get four of my favorite spice blends, including Chef AJ's favorite barbecue seasoning of mine. And it's just free. Spoiler report. <laughs> That sounds much more exciting than my <laughs> life. Here, I'll pull these back here. I think she's talking about your specials. Oh, uh, okay. I'm so, I'm so, you guys, do you see? 
You see where I am? Suzanne. Susanna says, thank you so much, Kathy and Cheryl. I bought a Ninja Creamy Deluxe for my family for Christmas. I don't have the course for myself. And so if you guys don't know the Ninja Creamy experience, so I have the Ninja Creamy ebook separate. The, included in the experience is the ebook and several hand-holding short videos that you can do everything with me from getting it out of the box to making your first few pints, all of it. And then there's two longer classes that were filmed live, answering all the questions. So chances are really good. Whatever question you have gets answered there. And if not, you can email me. So <laughs> Sheila says, Kathy's embrace of Cheryl's inner shopper coming out. That's good. And this is good and healthy. <laughs> and um, yeah, Diane says, I hide things and then forget where I put it. I do that with things that I need to find. Yeah. If you don't, if you need to find something, that's the best way to lose it. Ooh, one anti venom says I'm moving to Greensboro. Hopefully this year, I need a good spa to work out. And I'm an esthetician, and I don't know in Greensboro, but I'm sure there are. I bet are. some of the big hotels. There is a very large hotel. I mean, I don't know if you're looking to work for someone like that, or if you're looking to to rent a spot. You probably have plenty of spots you could rent. Mm -hmm. The one of the places we love to go to is not in Greensboro, it's in Asheville, is Wakefoot Sanctuary. Yeah. So whenever we go to Asheville, that's our big splurge. And literally, they bring out these giant copper bowls. They roll them out, and you get these foot soaks. And you can add massage and different things and hot tea. And it's, it's lovely. It's so relaxing. Like. We, we do not go to Asheville without doing that. Like, We've been lucky that we've always been able to get a reservation in advance. One of these days, I think it's going to bite us if we on our last minute stuff. But hopefully that doesn't happen because I think we would both be very sad. I think we could always get the soak, but we may not be able to get the ex extra packages, right? Well, well, the goal is to not be so stressed out that you need more than the soak. But the people that work there are lovely. They're so nice. And I keep wanting someone to open one closer yeah. to us. Yeah, they have one in... Asheville and they have one in Knoxville but we want them to come this way yeah not that way one anti-venom if you want us like if you know there's a couple of spas and if, if we're in Greensboro we'll go check it out for you or something too just yeah. let us know Robin says my mind goes to sweet treats so I keep um, sweet potatoes now in the fridge so that's really awesome and Dilla has been going through so many cravings. I went back to Trader Joe's and on the way out, I bought peanut butter cups at the checkout. I gave them to the security guard. Mm -hmm. And that's amazing. That is amazing. That is so amazing. And in case you are not praising yourself enough for yeah. doing that, yeah. you know, that's a lot. That took a lot of self control. Yep. And it took a lot of compassion for your goals and your health. So. That's amazing. And you shared it here with us, which is also yeah. just amazing. And, and you know, we, have, we, we fight those same things, you know. Yeah. Me throwing away that candy, like, that was, that was a big deal for me that I threw that out. So. And she told me, which in yeah. the past you wouldn't have told me anything about it. Mm -mm. And Lynn said she signed up for the Dr. McDougall 12 Day Plan in January and that it's less intimidating after hearing us talk about it. I'm glad. Apple put in the peanut sauce as well. I don't know if we put it, but. And SFOS signed up, too, for nice. the Google program. So, yeah. You guys are going to love it. You, you really are going to love it. I mean, take it from the person who was like, nope, nope, not doing it. Um, I am so glad that, that I ended up joining in and doing it because it's been, it's been life-changing for me. You know, not only getting off, what, now 40-plus pounds this year? Yeah, you've lost um, a lot. You know, and 30 of them on the McDougal. So I, I really, you know, hopefully I'm going to have another 30 off by well, my birthday. Well, we'll you know, I think everything's going to work out really well. Mm -hmm. Let's see. But slow and steady. Ooh, someone's making a chestnut loaf. Ooh. I can see, see now that. I'm in I'm interested in that now. I'm passionate. I'm thinking about it. 
because those that they're kind of magical once you put them in there. Mm -hmm. I can see that. That sounds mm -hmm. like a delicious thing to do. Okay. I think Chef AJ is over in the plantathon. <laughs> we lost. We people, lost her. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah. Pigs love to have their bellies rubbed. Pigs are the cutest, yes, cutest they are. things. Period. Um, we love you too, Elizabeth. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know. That's great. Aw, Diana, you're so sweet. Uh, first found us through Chef AJ. Oh, Elizabeth, that's great. I, Elizabeth also lent me her Excalibur yeah. dehydrator. So yeah. I know you guys have heard me talk about that. I've like dehydrated all the things, Elizabeth. We have so much to talk about. <laughs> and you gave me a dehydrator book, and I actually had that dehydrator <laughs> book. So I was like, ooh. But I made, I made some caramelized onions that I dehydrated. I just so many things. We have so much to talk about. Mm hmm um, oh, I'm glad you like the show. We're definitely silly. And a TS, maybe make a whole food plant-based type turducken with pumpkins stuffed with cauliflower stuffed with sweet potatoes. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> TS, you win on that That's, idea yes, for sure. Yes. Yeah, and Serenity Blooms is like, <laughs> yes! Um, and Laura says chestnut cream is a big thing in France. They make... Mont Blanc, Blanc dessert with it. Nothing we'd ever eat, but very pretty to look at. And dessert crepes with um, chestnut cream. I could see that too. Oh, <laughs> Elizabeth said she loved her ladybug video. I, I was don't very know if you guys nervous. Got to see the ladybug video. My next one will be much better because I was pretty nervous, and then I realized at the end <laughs> that I never really did a before and after, and I'm sorry. Um, but hey. This floor looks floor amazing. Looks amazing. <laughs> and our friend Caleb um, was like, I wish there had been before and after shots. And I was like, no, no one needed to know how black this cork was because we thought that it was just. I mean, I mean, I literally. I thought we were wearing through it, so we just kind of gave up. Like, and I was, I literally, mopped. I literally mopped it before I started that because I was like, I don't want it to look gross on, on, on video, so let me clean it up. But it was gross. Yeah. It was gross. Um, and Marlene says, that's a cool place. I retired from, um, why is this not showing up? There we go. Buncombe. Buncombe County, Asheville. There's a lot of cool experiences. There yes. really is. And there's a lot of really good um, plant-based food. Not all oil-free, but there's you can get some stuff in there. Yeah, it's a huge win for Cheryl. It was. Mm -hmm. And I think Greensboro has some cool stuff too. And in fact, Durham has Durham and Raleigh have cool stuff. But mm -hmm. we like to go to, um, to yeah. Greensboro just because it's so, it's an hour away. An hour away is kind of a nice. It's easy not even drive. quite. It's not even quite an hour, depending on where we're going. Sometimes it's only like about fifty minutes, depending what side of Greensboro we're going to. But. Um, it's just nice. I mean, we kind of got our favorite places. We like to go there. And and, and the Rosses are nicer than the <laughs> ones in Durham. So yeah. I, it All the makes shopping no places. sense that we drive an hour to go to a discount store. <laughs> but it's just more of us getting into a new area. When the pandemic happened, we used to drive places mm -hmm. like that and just get takeout mm -hmm. and sit in the car and eat it just to be out of the house for a little bit. It yeah, really yeah. helped. And there is a great vegan community mm -hmm. um, in the area. The Triad uh, Veg Fest is done by Helene, who also does the Triangle Veg Fest. There's some restaurants there. If you look, I'm sure you've already started looking on Happy Cow. And then one of the best vegan restaurants is Fiction Kitchen that's in Raleigh, Caroline Morrison, and she's amazing. When Chef AJ was here a few years ago, she said Carolyn made her something oil-free. So probably if you called in and wrote something with your reservation and it's not a busy weekend night, yeah. she probably can hook you up. It, it wouldn't be possible on the weekend, I don't think, at all. Well, and they're getting ready. They're moving from their original location to a bigger location, so they might have more kitchen room, but they were really packed in that kitchen. They do mm -hmm. a lot. I do not have a recipe for a chestnut loaf. If somebody else wants to to post any that they have that would be great 
I might make one. If I make one this week, maybe I'll actually finally get some blog posts up. I have a backlog of recipes that I promised you guys I was going to put up. That's all I have to say. <laughs> um, Marie says, can you please recommend a good dehydrator? And I don't know if Marilyn is still around. Marilyn also has an older Excalibur. She, she's the dehydrator goddess of the group. And she said she didn't like the new ones because they couldn't go low enough for her, that it doesn't go quite as low. There was someone else who had a Sahara, someone else who had a Sedona. Mm -hmm. I use my Breville. Mm -hmm. And the only thing with the Breville, where's my little witch person? So from Humane Halloween has a gift exchange. <laughs> And so this is a little witch that sits on the pot to hold it, like the lid open or something like that. And I use it because it gets a lot of condensation in here, so I use it to prop this up. And that helped a lot during the dehydration, so that's something else to think, too. Mm -hmm. The, the Excalibur worked really, really well, though. Oh, yeah, the Excalibur was lickety split. Like it was Elizabeth amazing. Elizabeth saved me a lot of work, so yeah. thank you. And um, one anti-venom says, wait, I wanted to ask you if you dehydrated your bullion cubes. You can. I would flatten them out more than bullion cubes. So Marilyn and I were talking. She just did this with my bullion. So you've got the paste, and you spread it on your sheet, that goes on the screen, that goes into the titrator, literally. <laughs> and she would score it, like in diamonds, and then put th those diamonds in a jar and then powder it when she wanted to use it. Um, I just take the paste and freeze it in the ice cube trays, pop it out of ice cube trays into resealable, like silicone bags, is what I do. Um, Kathy says, I dehydrated pureed mashed potatoes into potato bark. Interesting. Today my husband was eating some and asked if I could make a barbecue version. And I made some with Kathy's barbecue seasoning. It's in the Excalibur now. I need a picture of this when it comes out. Yeah, Kathy. That, might be, that might be the trick to your potato crunch. chip crunch. Yeah, I've been really thing. wanting a crunch. Oh, Patsy is saying, is the dehydrator class separate from your cooking classes? No, it's part of Kathy's cooking club. Sometimes I'll go, let me make this class for sale separately. And sometimes I put it in bundles. And I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. Hmm. There, I dim demonstrated that. <laughs> I know, I preach into the choir. Um, but if, if there's a class you guys want, the, the reason they're not all there, there's over 100 classes now. And when I switched platforms last year, I have to make a sales page for each, per, each one. It doesn't automatically happen. And that's why I do things like now I've got five classes in the bundle. Two were filmed with slow cooker uh, recipes in the Instant Pot. And you get Instant Pot. So you, they were filmed, me making them in the Instant Pot, and you get the slow cooker variations. These last three are filmed in the slow cooker because we're filming some ahead, rolling those during the live class. And so I was like, let's bundle that puppy up. But I have one other dehydrator class at this point. I think there's going to be a third one coming up. The first one, I made a dehydrated bouillon with veggies, so like carrots and mushrooms and celery, all the things that we cook and make a paste out of. I just chopped and dehydrated and then ground into a powder. It was delicious. But also, and I think it's, I have a dry bouillon. I have two dry bouillons. So let me give you, so I have a chickeny bouillon that's, that's um, not that much effort <laughs> at all. And then there's a beefy bouillon. And so by chickeny bouillon, I mean it has nutritional yeast and gives that kind of umami. By beefy bouillon, it's dark from mushrooms and some other things. So, so Patsy, t tell me what you need for me. Um, <clears throat> Oh, happy.
happy Thanksgiving to you, Deborah. We are, we're probably going to end, end fairly soon. If you guys have some more questions, keep asking them. We'll keep talking. Mm -hmm. But um, we have not had dinner. And we I have still not. have to make. Did you hear my stomach? Is that what? No, no. I didn't hear your stomach. Was your <laughs> stomach rumbling? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we've got that going. We are going, I've got to put this up, but tomorrow we're going to go live at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lisa Rice is going to join us. We're going to do like a pre-Thanksgiving chat. chat. We're going to get <coughs> pre-Thanksgiving game plan. A game plan and just answer questions. And also, we'll see. Maybe we'll make some stuff. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll show you some stuff if I get like on top of things and prep some things. But we... Um, no. And then Thursday is probably going to be 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which I know is pushing it for you guys on the West Coast. But I feel like tomorrow night kind of knocks out our UK people. Mm. So I'm, I'm hoping it'll kind of go even. Yeah. And if we come home Thanksgiving Day, if we don't stay and play games really late, maybe we'll pop back on and just kind of tell you what our Thanksgiving was like and maybe show you pictures if it's good. Mm. Yeah. If it's not picture worthy, I'll do that too. Um, Kathy says they're like thick potato chips. They can be made into a powder, then rehydrated into mashed potatoes. That mm. I get. I got the instructions from the backpacking chef. My husband's a hiker. Kathy, you need to talk to Marilyn. Mm -hmm. Next time, and make sure you guys are making friends. Um, oh, good. And and there is going to, like I said, I'm going to put the cooking club on sale. Honestly, if you go and look at my lives on Chef AJ, I think there's some sale prices left over that still work. They all may not. Um, but usually the cooking club is $50 a month. And I'm going to put it half price, probably. Unless something moves me in a different way. But I did a sale this summer for that. Usually I have it on sale for $30 when I put it on sale. So, But I figure if it's Black Friday, I should go a little, do that $5 extra. Yeah. Um, oh, thank you for hanging out with us, Tias. This is awesome. Yeah. We really appreciate you guys. You always brighten our day, for sure. Yeah, and we're all in this together. And it's such a great community. Oh, and happy Thanksgiving to you. And I'll, we'll be saying happy Thanksgiving mm -hmm. a couple of times. And then I guess there's the, and I did see that, the plants, plants something or other. I'm trying to find that name again. There we go. Plantathon. The, um, so go ahead and go watch the Plantathon if you haven't already. Could be watching two things. We don't want to do that. But it was nice of Chef yep. AJ to pop in and say yeah. hi to all of us. You guys have an amazing night. We're all here. Nobody's, you know, by themselves out in the world. We're a great community. Source this. You know, if you're feeling a little bit lonely, then watch some other things on YouTube. Go ahead and call a friend. There are all kinds of things you can do, too. And there's kind of... I know it, it's all in the situation because I remember when I first moved here, I felt really lonely being alone, being by myself, and now it's a treat to be by myself. <laughs> and so, and it's cyclical, right? And it, sometimes it depends. It's how you feel and what you can do. But I had had such a strong friend group in New Orleans that at the drop of a hat, I could call somebody and go do something. And I didn't mm -hmm. have that for a long time. It was yeah. a very, very uncomfortable feeling. But we're all here for you. And we're all working on ourselves together. Yeah. And that means a lot. So don't forget that. You have a community here. Mm -hmm. And, okay, let's see what else we got down here. And Mary Cooper says, Happy Thanksgiving. Apple says, Thank you. Good night. Um, Patsy, happy Thanksgiving. Do, do, do. Have a wonderful holiday. Love and light to all. Blessings, Angela, so sweet. Mm -hmm. Cheryl says, I enjoy spending time with you here. Thank you for all you do. I just love this community. Happy holidays to us all, indeed. Because mm -hmm. 
and our lovely Canadian friends aren't celebrating Thanksgiving this week. But there's still enough holidays, I think, going on from now mm -hmm. till the end of the year. We all can talk about the holidays and holiday um, yeah. yummies. Well, and I feel like, um, I know when I was growing up, pretty much the food for Thanksgiving was pretty much the same food for Christmas. Um, well, there's some, there can be you know, some, some crossover. And Terry, it's kathyhester at gmail.com or support at healthyslowcooking.com to get yep. to Cheryl. All right, you guys, have an amazing rest of your night, and we will talk to you tomorrow night. We sure will. Okay, bye. Bye, everyone.